everyone, it's Max and welcome to a new week's reading vlog. I did not vlog yet last week. I vlogged reading one book and there's probably like three or four clips so I will put that in now. Hi everyone, it's Max and welcome to a new week's reading vlog. It's Thursday, so it's basically a weekend reading vlog. That's because I have been in a bit of a rut. So it is March 4th and I have not finished a book. I am making some really good progress on Mastiff by Tamora Pierce. This is my Tamora Pierce book of the month. It's the last book of the Becca Cooper series. I'm really liking it. This is Becca Cooper who is a police officer and she is sent to try and find the crown prince who is missing. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really excited to see what happens next. Now the physical book I've been reading is An Artificial Night by Shauna and McGuire and honestly I don't know why this is taking me so long. I'm halfway through and I had wanted to finish it on Tuesday. That did not happen obviously. I'm reading every day. I'm just like reading it so late at night that I'm so tired and like falling asleep while I read it. So yeah. But now, I did have three other books, or three books to finish this week, but I don't think I'm going to get to all of them, and that's okay. So, the one book that I really need to finish is An Artificial Night. The other book I want to finish is An Arc of the Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst, because it comes out soon, and the archive date, I think, is like the same day it comes out. Hoping to give myself Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to read it. That does mean I need to finish this tonight, and unless all of a sudden work gets really slow and I'm able to catch up on everything, I don't know if that's going to happen. It is my lunch break, so that's why I'm talking to you, but I'm going to try really hard to finish this. I've got a hundred and... I have 170 pages left, which is a lot. That is a lot. So I just need to actually, like, get down to business and read. I just haven't been doing that lately. I've not been prioritizing reading. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I do have Becca's Bookopolathon this month, which is 20 or 48 hours of reading, but it does interfere with something else I'm doing, which is like kind of sucks. And because I didn't know the date that I had like accepted to do that until after like it was announced. And so I'm just like bummed. But I that does mean that I can save some of my maybe shorter books for that, but also I don't want to rely on that. Like last time I was able to read all eight books, but again, I'm in a much slower reading, bigger reading slump than back then, which was what, when was that, July? That was like last year, that was like my prime time of reading. But, so I'm gonna try and read four. So like for each role, I'm gonna try and read a book. The first two roles were dark cover and fantasy, both of which work really well. Um, and if I'm not able to get to the fantasy, which is gonna be Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, so I can participate in the witch along that Jade from JD Ray Reads is hosting, where we read that whole series. Um, if I don't get to it this month, then I'm probably not gonna participate because I just don't have time. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know, because I've got more books on my actual own TBR that I want to get to. So we'll see, but that is one of the books I want to read. So this week now, my plan is not to finish Mastiff. I'm listening to an actual physical half hour a day, um, and that'll get me done in, I think I've got like seven days left, so that's fine. And that's audiobook one of two. And then my other audiobook is Record of a Spaceborn Few, but that's, then I'll have more days to listen to that. And I don't know what I'm saying. I'm like, my mind is just like totally jumbled. Yeah, so plan for this week is to finish An Artificial Night and read The Bone Maker's Daughter. No, that's not right. Sarah Beth Durst's book, I'm like just a mess. The Bone Maker, I think it's just The Bone Maker. But we'll see. I'm like, obviously, I mean, literally me just trying to talk and like open this vlog, I'm a little bit all over the place. And that is a very good indication of my mental state right now, which is really fun. But anyways, I am gonna talk to you later once I've made some progress in an artificial night, which I'm going to try so, so hard to finish today. We'll see. Hi guys, it's Saturday. <laughs> Oh man, this vlog might not go up. We'll see. It's been just a week, you know? 
But I just got back from cross country skiing, but I wanted to let you know that last night I did finish An Artificial Night by Shawnee McGuire. It was okay. This is definitely not my favorite of the series. Uh, this takes place, this is about October, Toby, who is going up against the Wild Hunt. And it's because they are taking children, including her best friend, two of her best friend's kids. And she's also kind of not propositioned, but hired by T Tybalt. Which who is the king of the cats and like um her lord they're all they're all missing people and they all kind of hire her to go after the main guy of the wild hunt and I don't know what about it wasn't really it for me I think part of it was that I wasn't in a reading mood um this past week but also like the story didn't intrigue me as much as the last one so i did end up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars like i did with the first book but i am really excited to see how the story progresses because i really like toby as a character i love tybalt or Tybalt, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I hate the name. I hate Tybalt. I really do. So I'm a little bummed about his name because I like him a lot. Um, but I also love some of the supporting characters, um, or all of them, basically. I just, it's a really, I really like the characters. And that's what I'm in this series for, because I do really like them. But yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. It's fine. I'm not disappointed or anything. But I have decided to change my TBR a little bit because the book, uh, The Bone Maker, The Bone Maker, something like that, by Sarah Beth Durst, actually doesn't archive until May. I thought it was like May 9th and it, the book comes out March 9th. So I think I thought that they were the same date in my head for a second, but they're not. So instead of that, because it is 500 pages, I'm gonna read The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune because this is just under 400 or just over 400, just under 400 pages. So I should be able to get to this in two days. It's also a really fun, fast, sci-fi contemporary LGBTQ plus romance so I think I'll be able to fly through this I've also heard amazing things about TJ Klune so I'm really excited about this I am dog sitting this weekend I thought which I'm actually really happy about I just found out today because I knew I was dog sitting sometime in March and but my dad kept saying it was going to be the weekend of the 20th which was also Becca's 48 hour readathon which I was a little bummed about that they were happening the same weekend but it's actually this weekend that I'm dog sitting. But anyways so that's what I'm doing I just took her for a cross country ski the dog and now I'm going to go to the gym but I'm just going to rest for a little bit beforehand maybe eat a snack and then go to the gym and then start on the extraordinaries and this is about a guy who is really into this superhero right because there are superheroes in this world and he starts making a friendship with the superhero and I don't know but I'm wondering if he starts to make a friendship with the superhero and this guy and he doesn't realize they're the same person or if he knows that the guy is the superhero not sure yet that's all I really know I know the sequel has just been announced so I thought this is honestly a standalone like I don't know I just kind of assumed for some reason but nope it's a series so I thought I would pick this up now so I can start looking for like if there's an arc of the sequel on Netgal or anything or then just be excited for the sequel whenever it comes out but anyways that's all I've got for you I'm still making my way through uh Mastiff I'm by Tamora Pierce I'm really enjoying it I'm really excited to see where it goes next there is a romance blooming between Becca and this other character and I'm into it and yeah I'm like 76 percent of the way through so I've only got like 140 pages left um if I've done the math correctly because I'm listening to the audiobooks so I'm not always totally sure what page I'm on uh but yeah so that's all I've got for you right now but I will talk to you once I've made some progress in the extraordinaries all right so it is Monday March 8th can't believe it's already March and I've got some big reading plans because I fell a little bit behind last week. The first one I want to talk about is my audiobook and that is Mastiff by Tamara Pierce. I only have an hour of like my time to listen to it so I'm gonna try and do that at the gym at some point <laughs> and maybe driving. We'll see. But other than that, I do have three physical books. First one I'm gonna talk about is a book of short stories that I want to read and this goes towards diverse it was gonna be the house on the cerulean sea but then my like i borrowed it and i put it on hold and then it just disappeared so i don't have it for another like 12 weeks but the book i'm gonna read is a universe of wishes which is a comp compilation of short stories compiled and edited by danielle clayton and the top literally says we need diverse books so it's definitely diverse there's i think 14 stories so i can read two a day and finish it this week i don't honestly know like if there's a theme to the stories besides diverse 
diversity. Like, I don't know if there's like one central like plot, you know, or if they're all just totally random. Uh, but I shall see as the week goes on. And then the first physical book I want to read, I'm very excited about, and that is A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. And this is the a retelling of the Iliad and the Odyssey, but from the women's point of view. So like Penelope and Briseis, I'm very excited. I really enjoyed uh, The Silence of the Girls, so I'm really hoping to like this. This goes towards like a book that takes place in ancient history. And so this takes place in very ancient Greece during the Trojan War. And then the last book I want to read is The the Extraordinaries by T.J. Klune. And this went towards read a YA uh, sci-fi. So I'm really excited. I am pumped about all the books that I want to read this week. I just have been in a bit of a slump. So I am hoping to be able to get to all of them. We'll see. I do really, really want to. I want to give myself two days for, or I guess I could basically give myself three days for a thousand ships and three days or four days for the extraordinaries. So that would honestly work. That almost be for both books, like a hundred pages a day, which should be very doable for me, but like it hasn't been. We'll see, I'm gonna really, really try. And I i don't know, I don't know why, because also it was my, the book that I read last week that you just saw was my Sean and McGuire book of the month, and I really liked the second one, so I don't know why I was having such a hard time getting into it. But I'm hoping that these books, I'm really excited for A Thousand Ships and The Extraordinaries, and I'm really hoping that they kind of pull me out of this slump. Um, so yeah, but I haven't read anything today. Shocker. I have two shows that have new episodes today, 911 and 911 Lone Star. So I am busy, but I, if I can get to a hundred pages of a thousand ships, I should be good. I think it's like 350 pages and The Extraordinaries is like 390 something. So The Extraordinaries, if I read a hundred pages a day, I'll be fine. Uh, a thousand ships, I need to read a little bit more than that, but we shall see. So I'm going to now log off and I'll update you once I've made some progress. All right, it is 11.15 on Monday and I'm 112 pages into a thousand ships. I'm enjoying it. I'm like exactly 30% of the way through and I'm really liking it. The Iliad portion is already done. So I'm not sure where else this is going to go. Like obviously there's the Odyssey portion, but I don't know. We did follow Aeneas's wife for one chapter, but she dies like I'm, I'm not gonna worry about spoilers if you haven't read the Iliad and the Odyssey or you haven't heard the stories sorry but she's literally one chapter so I thought maybe we'd follow her I read a part of the Aeneid in college but I didn't finish it like they didn't have us finish it so I was like oh maybe we'll follow her and like her husband's journey but no she dies so I don't know are we just following Penelope I'm really hoping we get Helen in this somewhere because I think that would be an interesting like storyline because you know this whole war revolves around her but we shall see overall I'm enjoying it the writing is really good um the story I do I just love the story I always have since I read the Odyssey in 10th grade and yeah so I am excited to continue but I am now gonna read a universe of wishes i think it's 14 uh stories so i'll read two stories a day so i'm gonna just sit down and read the two stories and i will let you know my feelings i'm gonna do like a ranking not a ranking like i'm gonna rate each story and then like do the um average rating for the final rating but i'll talk to you all later all right it's 11 45 and i just finished two stories of a universe of wishes there are 15 so at some point we have to read three that's not gonna be tonight it'll probably be during the weekend but i really like the first one uh that it was a world where wishes are like you can get wishes from dead people and certain wishes cost more like magic that you can get from dead people and our main character wants to bring his parents back to life um it was really good i thought it was really interesting and a nice short story second one not so much second one there are three people who are competing to become the consort of like the bloom which i'm assuming is kind of like the king or the crown prince and it was just kind of meh because both of them the diversity is that they're gay and the first one, it worked out well, I liked it. But the second one was so insta-lovey. And like she gave up everything she'd been working towards for like this girl. And like, yeah, I like that it was gay. 
but it's still like that happens a lot with like male female ro romances and I don't like it like I don't like just giving up everything you've ever wanted and worked for for like some random person that you've said maybe two words to so didn't really like it so the first one I'm gonna give a 4.25 out of 5 stars second one I think like a 2.75 out of 5 stars so definitely different ends of the spectrum so I'm excited to see how I feel about the others but I'm gonna go to bed now. I'm very tired and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Good night. Hi guys. It's Wednesday night. I didn't update you yesterday. I didn't read anything yesterday. I am a self-sabotaging monster, basically. <laughs> but I am now 226 pages into a thousand ships and I'm really enjoying it. I do wish it was a little bit more linear. Like, I can appreciate non-linear when it's like has a purpose, but in this it doesn't really seem like there's a purpose. It just jumps around willy-nilly. But I do wish it was more linear, like the plot. Because we'll get like one scene that's like from what would be like almost like the end of the story at the beginning and then a scene that like we should have had at the beginning in the middle and I don't know I just wish there was more structure to it because right now it doesn't really feel like there's any structure but overall I am really liking the writing I'm liking the characters and even though I know how the story ends for like Penelope and Helen I'm excited to see what happens with like some of the more minor characters that I don't remember uh from the Iliad and the Odyssey but that's all I've got to talk about for this. So I am almost done with the third story in the universe of wishes, which is a Gemma Doyle story from Libba Bray. And I am realizing that I, I really don't like when in a short story collection, an author like has a story that's based on a book series that they've already written. Now I get it. Like, I feel like George R. R. Martin has done this with like Game of Thrones short stories, but they're like, past Targaryens. They're not about Daenerys. That I can understand. That I enjoy. But this is like the main character of the story is Gemma Doyle, who is one of the main characters of Libba Bray's other series. And you really need to have read the series to like understand what's going on because it's just... It's very meh because I didn't read the series and so I'm not that invested. I'm not that interested. I don't know like what they're talking about. And yeah, so in that case I'm really very eh about it and I did read the first Gemma Doyle book and so I think the diversity is that she's half Indian I'd have her ethnicity wrong but she's half it's been so many years I think it's Indian um but yeah so it's pretty average so I'm gonna now finish that story and read the other one that I have to read and I will get back to you once I've done so. My biggest news is that I have finished Mastiff by Tamora Pierce. This was my Tamora Pierce book of the month, and it was the last book in the Becca Cooper trilogy, and I enjoyed it. This was, Becca was trying to find the crown prince who was kidnapped by slavers, and there's this whole bigger conspiracy at work. I liked it. Some of the things, like there's one big plot twist, it felt like it really came out of left field, didn't really like it. I feel like it was really just there for like the shock factor and I didn't feel like anything was actually like foreshadowing that, especially throughout the series. And yeah, it was pretty average. I did like the story. I just had a problem with the series as a whole not having a cohesive plot line. Like each book had its own story and it could basically be a series of standalones because each of them is their own separate thing. And the romance was good, it just felt rushed. So overall, I am gonna give it a 4.25 out of five stars, maybe even less. I'm a little bummed because I think Becca's like one of my favorite of Tamora Pierce's characters, but the story itself, I liked. It's just, I feel like it was lacking in quite a few things. But anyways, I'm going to read my story and 10 pages and I'll talk to you after. All right, it's almost midnight and I just finished the second story of the night, A Universe of Wishes, from A Universe of Wishes. And the first one I'm gonna give a two star, the Gemma Doyle one. And then the second one, I think I'm gonna give a 3.75 out of five stars. The diversity is a trans man and like get like um lg then just other people of the lgbtq plus community um i enjoyed it. it's like a cinderella retelling which is cute um i just i do have a hard time with romances in short stories because it always feels so insta-lovey and so rushed so it was good 
I might I might do a four. You know, I'm just gonna do a four uh, for that one, especially because the Gemma Doyle one's gonna be a two. So, so yeah, I'll give the second one a four out of five stars. But I am going to go to bed. I'm very tired, <laughs> and I will talk to you all tomorrow once I've finished A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. All right, it is 11.30 on Thursday, and I just finished A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, and I ended up really enjoying it. Um, yeah, really liked it. I don't have many issues with it. My biggest issue is the timeline and how there's no linear linearity to it. It's not linear. <laughs> it's very all over the place, and I'm not really sure, like, why she decided to do it that way, because I don't really think it was a benefit to the story or anything, but I did really like it. The writing is super good, and I just love these characters. I loved the Iliad. The Odyssey is one of my all-time favorite books, and so I did just really like having this, because The Silence of the Girls really blew me away, and I really enjoyed this as well. So I think I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Very, very good. Um, just I did have a problem with that timeline issue. And I have also read one of my two stories for A Universe of Wishes. Did not like it very much. I gave it a, I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Honestly, I might drop it. Um, I don't know. Like, I think the diversity was just like, they're from, they're like all different ethnicities. Um, and it was just kind of, it was okay. There wasn't much of a plot and I just didn't really care. Um, so yeah, but now I'm about to read V.E. Schwab's story, so I'll let you know how I feel about that one. Okay, it's 11.51, and I just read the other story in A Universe of Wishes. This basically goes back on what I was saying about the Gemma Doyle story, because it's V.E. Schwab's, and it's telling the love story between Rye, the Prince Rye in A Darker Shade of Magic, and his love interest, who is introduced in book two, who I will not name. Um, and I really liked it. <laughs> I knew I would as soon as I read the paragraph where she was like, this is taken from a darker shade of, this is set in the world of a darker shade of magic. And it follows the love story between Rye and Blank. And I was like, yes, <laughs> love it. I love it. Um, but I also feel like you could read that on its own. Like she explains magic. She explains like what Kel is and Lila and everything. So I'm like, I feel like I could have read it on its own. The Gemma Doyle one, I really don't think, because I was just reading it and so confused. So, anyways, really, really liked the story in A Universe of Wishes. And, yeah. So, it's, only, it's the only one that's really, really stood out to me so far. But I am hoping to enjoy more of them as the book goes on. But... I'm gonna go to bed. I'm very tired. I am gonna start the Extraordinaries tomorrow. I'm very excited. And I'll see you all later. Guys, it's Friday and I'm bummed. I'm 50 pages into the Extraordinaries and I am not liking it at all. I just, now this is gonna get controversial, but I just am a little sick of how like every time someone in the LGBTQ plus community is re is like represented, they have to have something else that's kooky. So one of them is like, what they call it? Like mini butch? No, <laughs> that's not the term. Like light butch, baby butch. One of them is like baby butch. One is like hippie, kooky, ooh. One has ADHD, which like the main character has ADHD. And he's queer. Well, I'm queer and I have ADHD. And reading this, I feel like he's an alien. Like, he is literally so far separate from, like, people. Like, he's just so... He just doesn't get it. And I'm like, okay, yes, you're, he's supposed to be this kooky, like, fanfiction-loving gay kid. But it's like... He just feels like an alien. Like, he has absolutely no concept of, like, normal human behavior. And it's just, like, I just don't like it. I feel like he's just so over the top and so extreme. And it just feels ridiculous. Like, I'm reading this just being like, okay, like, this is ridiculous. Like, calm down. It's just, like, too much. <laughs> and his friends are like fine but all of them are just so cookie cutter stereotypical like okay well we got the butch we got the femme we got the nerd we got the kooky like introvert who writes fan fiction like we just like hit all the boxes of the queer community and it's just like and he is so 
obsessed with extraordinaries. So if the romance is between him and Shadow Star, uh, it's weird. He feels almost like a stalker. Like, it's so weird. What's the guy's name? Yeah, Shadow Star. Like, he literally feels almost like a stalker. Like, he found out his friend's dad's building was, like, like, robbers went and, like, did, like, some, like, big crap to it. And Shadow Star supposedly was there to save the day. And instead of being like, oh, my God, is your dad okay? Are you okay? Like, what happened? He was like, oh, my God, can you get me the footage? You have to get me the security footage. I have to see it. And I'm just, like, not into it. And if it turns out his best friend Seth is Shadow Star, like I don't even know the age. Like I don't know. Maybe I just thought there was gonna be a romance between him and Shadow Star because like I don't know, for some reason that's why I thought it was gonna be and it's not. I feel like it's gonna be between him and Seth. It's just it's just weird. And like yeah, the tagline is some people are extraordinary, some are just extra. Like, yeah, but in a bad way. I just like don't I feel like there none of these characters are people that you can actually like connect with and sympathize with because they're so so stereotypical and our main character Nick just I don't like him at all I just find him just so I don't even know how to describe it he's just alien he literally feels like an alien and maybe it, like I mean maybe it's gonna come out that he's and this is gonna sound awful but like if there was a reason like he was autistic or he has Asperger's he's on the spectrum of some kind I feel like I'd get it more like he has a hard time like actually connecting with people but if his but if the excuse that the author has is that he just has ADHD that's not like no like I have that and I'm f fine like I can be a normal human being and so the fact that he's just so like he's so separate from like normal human human interaction and like being a regular person that it's just like he's so it's just too much like i'm just every single thing he says is just so over the top and ridiculous and he uses words that are ridiculous like like Philistine to his dad when his dad talked about Tumblr and like just ridiculous stuff that's just like I don't know I feel like the author's just trying way too hard to like be like oh yeah look at all these quirky cool characters I'm inclusive when in actuality the characters all feel so ridiculously over the top that it's not inclusive it's just ridiculous and yeah so I think I'm gonna DNF it I honestly can't can't I don't want to read another page so I am going to look at the rest of my books on my TBR and see if I have anything else that could be YA sci-fi because I don't know if I do all right I read the three stories and honestly I enjoyed all of them I gave the first two four out of five stars and the last one a 4.25 out of five stars so yeah I'm happy I'm enjoying them all or I enjoyed them all and I'm excited to continue. I just, I'm realizing with short stories, I'm not a fan of romance that isn't already established or if it's like budding, like, you know, they met and now there's like a future, like there could be stuff in the future. But when it's like they meet, they fall in love and all of a sudden it's like happy ever after. I can't do that in short stories, especially when they're only like 12 pages. And so the three that I just read, none of them had that. And like, yes, I know my favorite so far has been the Rai Maresh story by V. Schwab, but I think that's because we got like two books of, like this was like a prequel story, like telling their beginning. And then like, we got two books of them the angst and the longing and the pining and everything so like i feel like it was justified <laughs> i was like yes give me that beginning um or maybe it's because it started with them like making out so they already had gone past the like getting to know each other phase and they're just dating i don't know but yeah so i'm realizing short stories i don't like it when it's like their whole love story is told in 12 pages but i am enjoying it on a whole as a whole and i'm excited to see what the other stories have in store but i'm gonna go to bed i am going to read hello cruel heart which has to do with like crella deville i think in like a completely contemporary setting i don't know i'm like not sure how i feel about it again it's by maureen johnson who i'm trying to remember like what i've read by her 
I have Truly Devious by her, like I own it, but I have not read it. So I might not have read, I feel like I read like some sort of anthology with her at some point, but I can't remember. So I'll check her out and I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Hi guys, it is Saturday afternoon and I have read my three stories of the universe of wishes. And I enjoyed one, didn't like the other, and felt very average about the third. So the second one, the reason why I really didn't like it is because it's like there's this place where they can unmoor people, which is like disconnect like a place from like memories. So if you have bad memories of a place, you can like disconnect the two. And our main character had, was cheated on and he's a teenager. So like first love and he's like, it's too painful. Everything is just too painful. And he pushes and pushes and like makes her take more and more, like unmoors more and more places. And then there's like a extra step for like really truly traumatic experiences. And he like makes her do it to him and like all this stuff. And I'm just like, you're a teenage boy, like get over it it was your first love like you'll move on and I just like had a hard time getting behind that and just being like are you kidding me like suck it up dude so didn't love that one honestly okay the first one it's like you can get your heart removed and like weighed with like your significant other and then it like shows I don't know I got a little confused because it was never really explained and then the ending was like open and it was just kind of like fine but like nothing was really explained and it was just like them getting ready for the surgery basically and then the third one was kind of like this sci-fi thing where it was really cool and this girl was like looking for someone and i don't know so they were all f average not great uh but i have three more stories left and i'm not sure how many pages left but i'm gonna save those for tomorrow and then I um, DNF'd a book. So I started Hello Cruel Heart by Maureen Johnson. And it was just not good. Like there were so many typos, which I know it's an arc. So like fine, like Fs, there was like no Fs. I swear, like every typo was just because the Fs were like not there. And then there the plot was like all over the place. The story was all over the place. Stuff was happening like way too fast. And it just felt so disconnected. And yeah, so I just didn't really like it didn't care for it then the last book i want to read this month is part of a secret tbr so i'm gonna do my ya sci-fi but here's the thing i got my fairy loot today and i know there's a ya sci-fi in here i don't know what it is but like from like what they gave us it sounds like sci-fi it's like in the future and it's like alternate you alternate history and so it sounds sci-fi enough for me so I am going to break the rules. I have not opened this. I haven't filmed it, but I am going to get the book out of it. So I'm breaking the rules like completely, but what can we do? So I will check back in once I get the book. All right. So the book is something I had never heard of, and it is This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. Um, I thought it was going to be something else, honestly, and I didn't really know. Like, I was honestly very unsure of what the book was going to be, but this was not it. I've never heard of it, so I'm just going to read the synopsis. Orphaned and forced to serve her country's ruling group of scribes, Karis wants nothing more than to find her brother, long ago shipped away, but family bonds don't matter to the scriptorium, whose sole focus is unlocking the magic of an ancient automaton army. In her search for her brother, Karis does the unseemingly does the seemingly impossible. She awakens a hidden automaton, intelligent with a consciousness of his own. Alex has no idea why he was made, or why his father, their nation's greatest traitor, once tried to destroy the automatons. Suddenly, the scriptorium isn't just trying to control Karis; it's hunting her. Together with Alex, Karis must find her brother and this and the secret that's held her country in its power for centuries. Okay, sounds enough of a uh, sci-fi for me with automatons and alternate history and stuff. Um, I'm intrigued. It's 380 pages, so I it looks shorter than that. So I'm going to try and read 190 pages today, 190 pages tomorrow to finish it. So that honestly next week's, the vlog that you're going to get of next week will probably just be Becca's tw uh, 48 hour bookopolathon because I'll be reading books for secret tbrs next week but i'm honestly really excited about this i'm intrigued for sure and yeah so this is really cool oh my god the cover like the actual book let me flip you around hardcover is gorgeous honestly and then this is also really cool 
So yeah, I'm intrigued for sure. So I'm going to start that. I'm gonna go to the gym. Oh, I don't wanna. It's like late, it's like 5.40 already. I don't know how. I went for like a long walk with my mom. So I might like do like a shorter gym thing. I should go to the gym, but I think I'm gonna try and bust out some pages of this right now. So I'll talk to you later. Okay, it's 6.30, so it's been like about an hour, and I'm 92 pages into this Golden Flame. I'm actually really liking it. It's very fast paced, and I'm having a good time. Did things happen a little fast? Yes, but you know, it's fun. I'm having a good time. I do like this. I don't know. Friends to lovers is so like hard for me where it sometimes feels rushed to me because we don't get that build up. But if the two characters in this are friends to lovers, I think I'll enjoy it because I like both of them as people and I also like their dynamic. And I also love like when they're like orphans and they only have each other. I'm a sucker for that. So. Yeah, really enjoying it, but I'm gonna go to the gym, probably have dinner, and then I will read the other 90-something pages I have to read to get to 190, and I'll talk to you all then. Hi everyone, it's midnight, and I just got to page 240 in This Golden Flame. I'm really liking this. I'm having a lot of fun. It's very fast paced, very easy to understand, and just like a good time. I like our characters, we've got four like we got like two main characters, two main supporting characters. I'm liking all of them. Uh, I really like our main character, Karis. She's very much like, she was an orphan. And people are like, well, don't you want to help people, you know, like so that they're not like you? She's like, I don't want to help the people that like kicked me out of doorways and like wouldn't feed me and all this stuff. And it's like, she's very self-preserving, but also like doing anything to save her brother. And I'm really into it. I also just, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I feel like if there is going to be a romance, it's going to be very, like, second, like, secondary. It's going to be a very secondary storyline compared to, like, our main plot. But it's just really fun. I'm having a good time. One thing, though, I end up reading 150 pages in an hour. I got to page 190. I started at 11. I got to page 190 at 1140. And so I thought, let me see how far I can get by midnight and I got another 50 pages. So because it's Sunday, I think I'm going to finish it right now. It should take me less than an hour. <laughs> I have 136 pages left and yeah, it's it just like, it just looks so attainable and I know it is. I haven't really felt this way in quite a while about a YA like sci-fi fantasy novel and yes it is a bit more fantasy than sci-fi but with automatons and like in the future I'm considering it sci-fi so I don't know what to tell you. I think I'm going to use another item for my fairy loot if I have a lighter up here because we got a candle and I think for the last hour I'm going to light it because like you know when a candle comes in a box I want to like use the candle with the book so we'll see. But I am probably not going to update you after this. I think I'm going to wait till tomorrow and I will update you with my final thoughts because I am tired. So I kind of want to just, as soon as I finish this, just go to bed. So I will talk to you all tomorrow. But overall, I am really enjoying it. Hi guys, it is Sunday and it is 1.30 and I have finished two books since I last talked to you, neither of which will be a surprise, but the first one I finished was This Golden Flame by Victoria, Emily Victoria. I finished this last night, or I guess early this morning, and I really enjoyed most of it. The ending was very, very rushed. It's a standalone and it just felt way too rushed like oh my gosh it all happens too fast and too easily but overall I did enjoy it I end up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars I wanted to really like this and I did like it's not bad by any means I suggest picking it up it was really fun fast-paced sci-fi but I think it could have definitely been longer and could have expanded on the world and the politics and just made it a little harder uh, for them to win than it was but overall, I did really like it. And this went towards read a YA sci-fi. 
And then the book that I just finished like two minutes ago was A Universe of Wishes edited by Danielle Clayton. I you added up all my ratings and then averaged it out and it ended up being a 3.5, which feels just about right. Nothing was a 5 out of 5 stars. My favorite story by far was Victoria uh, V.E. Schwab's story, which was about Rhymeresh and his love interest in A Darker Shade of Magic, which I really, really enjoyed. No surprise there. Um, another one that I really liked that I just finished was a Rapunzel retelling that I enjoyed. Um, there were a few that I didn't like. I'm trying to remember like what my least, oh, my least favorite was I think like the second story and there was a competition and she was like into the woman but then like she like screwed them all over to like win or something. Now I can't remember but I feel like that was it. and there was a competition to like protect the prince and so it was like fighting and then choosing a guy at the end or whatever. Um, but yeah, so overall it was okay. I really do have a problem with short story collections where I just, you know, and I feel like this is pretty standard across the board that a lot of times in story collections there are stories that you love stories that you don't like and so it's hard to give like a short story collection like a really high rating uh but overall i did enjoy it as a short story collection on a whole i wish there was more of a theme like i feel like the wish theme was very subjective like i feel like some of the ones that i was reading like i was like how is this connected to like wishes um but overall i did enjoy it and this went towards read a diverse fantasy I am going to end the vlog here because I don't really have anything else to talk about. So the first book that I finished this week was A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes and this went towards read a book that takes place in ancient history and I end up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The only thing that got to me was that the linear, the non-linear storyline didn't really add anything to the story and so I wasn't quite sure why she decided to go about it that way. The next book that I finished was Mastiff by Tamora Pierce which was the third and final book in the Becca Cooper series which I gave a 4 point two five out of five stars. I thought the romance was pretty rushed and I did have an issue with the story overall that there wasn't a series storyline. Each story felt like a standalone which I'm okay with with like big series where you're reading it and it's like if it's like just like the adventures of Becca Cooper but the fact that it was just a trilogy I kind of wanted more of a like overall series storyline and I just didn't get that and I thought that the romance was pretty rushed and I gave it a 4.25 out of five stars. Next book I picked up, I ended up DNFing, and that was The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune. I just feel like they, I feel like, and this is, I do have a hard time with this with a lot of books, where it's like, it feels like you're reading, it's like you can't be gay without having other issues. And I just wish I could read about like some just totally regular person that just so happens to be queer. And it's just like, especially like our main character where he's queer and has ADHD, but then he's also just like, I don't know, like, just, like, doesn't seem to be able to connect with humanity, and, like, I'm queer, and I have ADHD, and I'm, like, just can't connect with him on any level, and he just, like, he felt like an alien, basically, and, like, all the characters had to fit, like, a certain box, a certain stereotype, and I just... I'm just really sick of like that where it's like oh she can't be gay without either being like butch or like super femme and the two lesbian characters are butch and super femme and then like there's the nerd and then there's the guy who is like super into fan fiction which don't get me wrong I like fan fiction as much as the other person but it's like you know it's like then he has to be this weird quirky guy if he likes fan fiction and it's just there were too many stereotypes that I'm just not into anymore, and so I ended up DNFing this. Now, it was supposed to be towards YA sci-fi, so because I DNFed that, I did decide to pick up This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria, which I ended up giving a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I just talked about it, so I don't need to go over it again. And then the last book that I finished this week was A Universe of Wishes, which I also gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So overall, a really great solid reading week. I finished four books, DNFed one, and I'm really happy with it, and I am in the mood to read. I haven't really been in the mood to read for quite a while, so I am pumped. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye!